Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome to this short transmission within the series Facing COVID-19 with PCR. My name is Bernard Prendergast, based in London, and I have the great pleasure to be joined by Flavio Ribicchini from Verona in Italy for some reflections on the lessons learned in the management of ST elevation myocardial infarction in the context of the COVID-19 outbreak. How did you go about reorganization of your STEMI service to make sure that the patients were cared for adequately whilst also I, I, preventing the infection? I have to say that the first idea when not, didn't went directly to the primary PCI service. The first idea was that this virus was coming with people. And you may have one STEMI per day, but you have a hundred of people coming to your outpatient clinic per day. So the first measure we took was closing the outpatient clinic and closing all what was elective care. Thinking about the STEMI was, I have to admit, a second step. And given that the patients are coming in from the community, how did you separate out the, separate out the COVID positive versus the COVID negative patients? Well, this we learned from our colleagues from the infectious disease. Together with the team of intensive care, we, we made a task force and we took three important decisions. The first one was setting the technique, the PCR technique, to the RNA determination of the virus to identify positive and negative patients first. Second was we are lucky because in Verona we have two big hospitals and we define one hospital as a COVID center and the other one where the cardiology division is as a COVID free. And the third one was, as I said, closing all the outpatient clinic and the elective interventions. And what about the steps that you needed to take to avoid the members of your team spreading the virus to each other or from one patient to the next? Well, uh, the same precaution is, uh, was, was adopted to the person in. We are a large family of more than 250 people in the cardiology division, so we divided the team in three groups. One group stayed in the cardiology to work, and we managed to continue our regular work, including interventions, including uh, structural procedures, electrophysiology, just what is needed, pacemaker implantations or ICD for non-elective cases. But all the things we normally do, we kept on doing with a third of our population. Another part was sent home as a reserve in case we got sick and could call them from home to take over. And another part of the cardiology team, nurses and doctors, were helping the COVID area in intensive care, in the pneumology division, and the, in the infective disease division, where most of the COVID patients were admitted. And having come through that phase, now we're through obviously to the middle or even the, the second half of April, do you have a sense that services are beginning to come back towards normality? I would say that since the beginning of April, this is more than one month since we started working, we are now in a positive phase where we have less patients every day coming to the hospital compared to those who are discharged. But until two weeks ago, when we were at the eye of the storm, we were having 30 or 40 hospital admissions per day with many of these patients needed, in, needed intensive care. Just to give you an idea, we have a capacity of 90 beds for intubation and intensive care, and we reach 85 people intubated. So we almost reach our limit. But as I said, there is a plateau, and now we are in a phase in which we have less and less COVID patients. They are less sick probably because of these measures of isolation and not recovering all the patients. And now we are back to our work because the number of acute coronary syndromes is again back to the normal and even more. So you've demonstrated clearly that there's, it's far more complex than the normal environment. Uh, STEMI is normally one patient, one artery and one stent. Whereas here you've had to completely reorganize your service and your team to cope with the demands of the pandemic. What would you say have been the key takeaway messages, the, 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 the things that you've learned along the way? Well, what, what you have said, Bernard, is absolutely true. Uh, 
you cannot spoil all your team to open one artery in one patient. You have to think that you will have many of them. And so you have to keep your staff free of the disease. And, and this is very important. To do that, uh, I think there are very important things uh, you have to do as an organizer of, of your team. First, first of all, is uh, being prepared. You know that chance favors the prepared mind. And if you are caught unprepared or you underestimate the risk, this, this situation may degenerate and escape out of control. Then when you mix positive and negative patients, you lose control and the game is over. Uh, we have to dedicate time and energy to empower our team, to provide them confidence, because we are all scared of this. You don't see this virus. This is a secret enemy. You don't know where it is. So people can get very, very worried, and you have to help them to control panic. You have to give answers. You have to clean the doubts. You have to be there. Second is to define who is the team leader inside the cardiology division and in the global context, because cardiologists are not the team leaders for this disease. These are the intensivists, and these are the pneumologists and the specialists in infective disease who put the treatment on the patient. We do our part. We have to take care of our priorities. STEMI, complete AV block, shock in young persons. And this is why we need to keep healthy and active. And third, to reach these goals is obsessive organization and respect of the rule. Stay to the plan and put each patient in the predefined pathway. Those positive go through a pathway, those negative go through another pathway, and those who are suspected need to go to a temporary isolation until they drop on one side or the other. But this is the only way you can organize your job to protect your team and to protect your population. So thank you so much, Flavio. The key messages are empower your colleagues, define the leaders and work as a team, and organize yourself and respect the rules. I very much hope that this has been a useful summary from uh, the early experiences in Verona, Italy. And I hope that you will enjoy the accompanying transmissions in this series on STEMI relating to diagnosis, the use of thrombolysis, and practical considerations when the patient comes to the cath lab. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.